You may have seen my other video about the eight reasons why you shouldn't become a structural engineer. This is on the kills of that video because I truly believe that structural engineering is for a lot of people. It's something that I enjoy and something that I obviously promote. So these are the eight reasons why you should do structural engineering. And most of it really starts with when you look at the built environment. Do you ever wonder how that was put together or how it got there? How did that bridge actually stand up? How did it actually get to a constructed form? How are they able to arch over the water? How is that high rise able to stand up underneath such loads? That's really up to the structural engineer to make sure that they can get it built. See, we have a great effect on everyone that lives, works and plays. So you look at those high rises and you can look up and wonder, something that I had responsibility for, it's something that I was able to make and come to life. Yes, yeah, some people may think they're easy, but who knows about that size of that column? Who knows about the outrigger floors? Who knows about the load paths that you had to design to make sure it was there? So the tangibility and the benefit that we have in society is massive. Using our problem solving abilities with our knowledge of structural mechanics and the built environment, we have the ability to affect and improve the lives of many people. Something you should all enjoy and be proud of as a structural engineer. Structural engineering is not just one profession. It's actually many rolled into one. So number two is the diversity of career development that you potentially have. So you're first starting out with designs, you're doing little buildings. That's where I started out. You can move into a little bit more architectural and more complex stuff. There's a lot of fun in that as well. Then you can later move into high rise buildings, office blocks, hospitals, schools. How about defense facilities? How about road infrastructure? There's immense number of careers that you can take your path on. And did you know most managers, especially higher up and C-level executives come from engineering a lot of the time as well? So why is that? It's because of our ability to problem solve. We can see the complexity of a whole system instead of just one little part. So you may have started out as a structural engineer. A lot of time by the end of their career, they've moved away from structural engineering and doing something completely different. Continuous learning is something that we all need to do as structural engineers. It's more than just us starting out. There's many things that we need to know, learn and educate from. Yes, it's something that potentially a lot of people shy away from, but it's something that means there is something always new in your career, in your profession and what you're trying to do. You can starting off with those small buildings and create a lot of different connections between what you're doing in those small stuff, new materials and how the direction of the profession is going. So if there's a lot of new stuff that you need to keep on top of. Yes, some people may see that as a side point, but something that I really enjoy is the constant learning and making sure there's something fresh and new that I need to know. Something that's recently happened, well, not that recent, but since I've started, was potentially back in the day, you didn't need to design for earthquakes. When I came in, earthquakes were something that was a little bit new, especially in Australia, that we were bringing in. We led to better structural designs, but it did mean a lot of the older guys had to learn a lot more stuff. So potentially as a young graduate engineer, you had potentially more knowledge than someone that was more senior than you. So number four is all about problem solving. See, problem solving is something that we love to do as structural engineers. We love those good problems about how we can get to the answer. And it brings the whole world to your table. You have to solve complex problems that meet both the structural requirements while being efficient and also practical so they can get built while still achieving the functionality that it needs and the architectural vision that it was intended. I'd just like to give you a quick interruption so the sponsor of this video can have a quick message. I've been promoting SkySafe for quite a while and you can see their links in the below description. I think they have a great FEA tool that allows you to bring FEA into the browser format so you can have it anywhere you go. And they've sponsored this video to promote one of their new tools. It is SkySafe's quick design tool where you can access over 80 different types of analysis and design calculators, such as the residential slabs and footing design or bulk groups. One of the key features is the fact that you can design your own analysis and calculators using their JavaScript framework. So whether it's available in the library or you have something unique that you need to do on a regular basis, you can make your tools in this same format and they've taken out most of the hassle for this analysis and they've made it beginner friendly and they've well documented. So it means that you can go in and build whatever tools you need, whether they be simple or complex, building computational analysis at your fingertips. And what makes it even better, Skyceiver is offering a step-by-step -step guide free on Udemy. So it means that you can get started needing to build your own tools. As building engineering tools not only makes you more efficient, but also produces better computations. So check out the link in the below description and I'd love to see the tools that you build. Now let's get back to the content. Too often we forget that structural engineering is all about creativity. We think it's a hard skill, but it's potentially also a soft and creative skill. Number five is all about job stability. Waves come and go, but if you're good at your career, there's always something that you can do. 
there's always next project that you can work on or where you're going to go. As long as there's buildings, we need people that can design them, put them together and inspect them. However, there's always a job out there potentially that you can work on, especially if you're good at your career. Now, whether you get bored or tired of structural engineering as well, you can move out to different areas, similar to diversity. So it really opens up your possibilities of the different career paths that you move on later. As a structural engineer as well, too often that you get to stay in a warm, cozy office and get to see the buildings build up around you. You're not out there on site like a lot of builders are. So potentially you have a more cushier job than a lot of others. Yes, depending on what career you do, potentially as a geotechnical engineer, you're on site a lot more, but it really means that you have a choice of whether you wanna work into an office, work on site, or work in different locales. You can pick which area that you wanna work on. So whether you like being out on site, you can do that as a structural engineer. You can be a site engineer and get paid well for it. Or whether you just rely driving around different places and drilling holes in the ground, that's where geotechnical engineering is. Now, these are all different fields within structural engineering. Structural engineering also doesn't really change, doesn't matter where you are in the world. Yes, it may change how you get there or the answers that you get, but it means that career mobility globally is something that you can have. Too often I've had lots of friends either go off to London, Canada, the US, and many other locations. And this wouldn't have been possible without their degree in structural engineering. Despite you having to learn those new codes, they know that you know how to design safe buildings. It doesn't matter how you actually got there. So you can get career mobility globally is another one of those big traits that you get that isn't common to a lot of other professions. Yes, as a lawyer, you may do one area, but you're not really too fay or know a lot about different other laws in other countries. So it's very hard to move globally. Where structural engineering is not the case. Although we don't really get credit for it and it's something that we actually only get credit as a profession, it's something that I think that all structural engineers should be proud of. But when you think about it and ask them about it, they go, oh yeah, structural engineering is a highly varied profession. Yes, it may have dropped off recently in the last couple of years. But back in the day, it was one of those most highly rated professions that you've ever seen. But it's also something that I think will come back with more responsibility. This is just something that I'm trying to affect because I know the responsibility that we have as structural engineers should hold us in high regard. But the reason why potentially we've been dropped off is because the only time you hear about structural engineering at the moment is in the news. People do want to know why things happen in a certain way. So they're indirectly respecting for what we're doing by being on those news stories about why a bridge fell down, why a building came down or other aspects. So I think over time, our respect and responsibility will increase. As you can see, there's a lot of tangible benefits, but did you know there's one big thing about the biggest mistakes that structural engineers can make? So I'm gonna to link to the video here about some of the biggest problems with structural engineering. And if you're interested in supporting the channel, there's two ways that you can do this. You can either become a YouTube or Patreon member. Without the support of my YouTube and Patreon members, this type of content would not be possible. As always, keep learning, and I hope to see you next time.